That? It's a lot easier with 35s than a two oh, inch leg. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It makes my life a lot less it's stressful. And crashy. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah, less exactly. crashy. A lot less. That's the right word. He got it. It's a lot less crashy. Welcome to day two of our epic Rubicon Trail adventure. Tommy is always just behind the camera. Say hi, Tommy. Hi. You don't sound too awake, Tommy. It's cold. <laughs> and yesterday we crawled and scratched our way across the first half of the Rubicon Trail, ending up here at camp. And today we decided to try a different Jeep because we thought, you know what? I'm tired of hitting rocks. I'm tired of scraping. So here we have the Mopar accessory jeep which has well let's give them a tour time let's show them what it has it's got looks like a two inch lift with box shocks we've got auxiliary uh, driving lights which we won't be needing we have are those real bead locks i don't know but they're 35 by 12 and a half 35 by 12 and a half what terrains wow so we've got a little bit different tire a little bit more mud oriented i see a worn winch of course the bumperettes have been removed which is good because we're going to need that We've got no doors. We got no top. Tailgate reinforcement. We've got a little uh, sunshade to replace, like a, almost like a like a modern version of a bikini top. This is very similar to our JK, right? It's got the same kind of stance, two door versus four door. Um, I think this is the right rig for this uh, for this trail. So coming up right now, day two, and we're gonna go up Cadillac Hill, which. I hear tell Tommy is where it gets really scary. So yesterday we were in the 2 liter turbo in the Unlimited Wrangler today in this lifted Mopar Jeep. We've got the venerable 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, 285 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque. This one is the 8 speed automatic. Alright Tommy, I've got the Monroni right here. This is, I think, without any of the uh, Mopar parts on it. This is just for the Jeep. How much do you think this guy cost? 45. Uh, nope, 49. So I'm here with one of my Jeep heroes. The only Rick Payway, the one and only, <laughs> and we're talking about tires because we were running 35s today on our um, our Mopar Jeep. But that that's pretty pretty extreme for back in the day. Back in the day, that was a huge tire. We started out coming out here, of course, on stock Jeeps with 28, 29s, and then when we got 31s, that was huge. 33s, my God, that was enormous. <laughs> Who would ever run those, right? Yeah. So then I started coming out with 35s, like Super Swapper Boggers, which have no business speed on this trail, and they worked phenomenally. Wow. Yeah, people thought we were crazy. And now 35 is a small tire. So what do you think of like this trend of just bigger and bigger? Is there a limit where, where oh, yeah. you think oh, it's there just... there is a limit. I'm, 54 is pretty huge. The 40s are the are the new 37s. Wow. That's that's reality. Just like 37s were the new 35s, which were the new 33s. And, so Rick, how has the trail changed over the years? Has it changed? It's changed. It yeah. changes every year, mainly because of the spring runoff and all the snow. It'll move all the rocks around and you'll you'll not recognize it from the year before. Then you put a couple thousand jeepers through it and it changes again. So every time you come through, it's going to be different. Is there like a conservation effort they put forth? Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. Rubicon Trail Foundation and a lot of the others, they're responsible for all the water crossing barriers, uh, blocking off some of the side trails that the Forest Service don't want to, to tear up the, the ground. Yeah, all of them. Everybody here at Rubicon Springs, Jeepers Jamboree, Jeep Jamboree USA, everybody is concerted to make sure that this trail stays open. That's great. I mean, it's a county highway, so they can't, like, close it, but still, so, every, everybody cares. So, Rick, when I first got in the jail, I was looking at all the little Easter eggs, you know, and I found the really strange one. I found what looked like flip-flops, and until yesterday, I didn't know why Mark Allen had put flip-flops in 
as an Easter egg in the Jeep. And now... Yeah, well, is it because of that? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> I've given Jeep a lot of input on design and function. And, of course, I'm a function guy. Okay. Yeah. If it doesn't work right, it has no reason to be there. I'm so happy to be in this. Our first obstacle, I feel like, you know, this is now kids play. So I feel taller, I feel like I've got more control. I feel like I'm not gonna hit the bottom of this Jeep. And uh, yeah, I feel like uh, it's gonna be a really good day. Down a little bit. Perfect. This is definitely the right Jeep. That was so much easier. I am like a kid in a candy store. I figured out why I like this Jeep better. I hate breaking things. Yep. Uh, and this is not going to break. Well, why do you say that? Well, because it's just got much more ground clearance. It's got much bigger wheels. It's just designed for, for this terrain. So oh, I, I think... Oh, they are, they are too heavy. They are too inflated oh my i think there's a difference though because like these rubicons will scrape all day right yeah i know they're meant to scrape i just and hate it we actually have a, a better chance of breaking this one i think because we're putting more stress on the axles oh they're 35 inch tires oh right? no they're not good. these are dana 44s yeah they're not gonna break it's just dancing over these rocks now if i can just air it down so it's not banging as hard I'm gonna be like a bug in a rug. <laughs> like I was in that marvelous sleeping bag last night. A bug in a rug. I don't know if you want to ah, Got it. Get it? You get yours? Come on. I'm still being stubborn. So Rick, when you typically run this trail, does it take longer or, or less time than, than what we're running it? This, got this is pretty average. Is it? Yeah? Yeah. We're going at a pretty good clip for being silly. Yeah. Even with all of our Jeeps and our guys stopping for, for photos and videos. Yeah. And taking that. off windshield wipers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. This is pretty normal. I mean, you can see that we've been here for a couple of minutes and they've barely moved 100 feet. Yeah. The rule is, if you don't want to wait, don't go on a Jeep ride. Simple as that. Yeah. Yep. Ah. All right. There we go. What are you doing? Hey, I'm airing down. They were at 42 pounds. I'm turning them down to like 25 ish. You're going to be airing down for a long time. Yeah, well, I'll do it one at a time. Can you still like secure the header on the roof, too? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, see this? It's Look at in, that. This is independent. So you can just latch it back on. So cool. Just because you have a windshield down doesn't mean you can't have a pump. Best just, of both worlds. Just like a real Jeep. We have a mesh today. We have like an Mopar accessory mesh. I like the mesh. I don't know if you can see the mesh, but... Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it is cool. I don't know. It doesn't block out as much sun, though. No, you definitely need a hat. Yeah, or sunscreen. Or, or sunscreen, both. or both, which we have, so we're good. We 
we're climbing, dude. We're climbing. You think this is the start of Cadillac Hill? I think we may be uh, right at the base here. Yeah, it looks like it. We do sacrifice some gearing with these tires. We do. But wonder what the gearing on this guy is. Well, it's it's a, it's a Rubicon, so it's four tens. Okay. So 77 to 1 ratio from the factory. But that goes away the second you put the big tires on it. Locked up! Is this the start of Cadillac? Uh, yeah, just right up here. Yeah? You need to make a sharp left-hand turn. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah poor Tommy's having a hard time walking up this... Yeah, I've been getting warm, too. It's starting to warm up, finally. A little bit. It was cold this morning. It was cold. So in the pursuit for a better ride quality, while we're stopped for a sec, we're going to keep Aaron down here with a pen because that's all I have. And more grip, my dad says, he's correct. So you know why it's called Cadillac Hill? Yeah, it's called Cadillac Hill because back in the 20s and 30s when it was a regular road, a Cadillac sedan actually went over the edge up here. And no way. tumbled down and death and destruction, all that kind of stuff, and not worth pulling out. And it's still there. It's still there, so you can still you can see, see a little bit of the fender and some of the frame. And yeah, the, the wow, what a, cool look. what a cool story. But it gets better because it's not actually a Cadillac. No, it's a LaSalle. Plot twist. But since <laughs> LaSalle was made by Cadillac, it's legitimately a Cadillac. So you can still call it Cadillac Hill. This is a Cadillac from Cadillac Hill. And there's the fender. It's right there. It's kind of hidden. But that's the Cadillac. Except for uh, a little bit of fender poking out right there. All right, Tommy, I'm curious to see what you think of this lifted Jeep. Do you think it's better or not? Well, certainly have more more ground clearance, right? And it's it's not only the lift that gives you the ground clearance, it's the um, tire, right? So with the lift, you get two extra inches of ground clearance at certain points, right? but then like your differential is still at the lowest point of the vehicle. Well, you know, when you put a bigger tire, all of a sudden that diff moves up two or so inches as well. Yeah. Bring it back up a touch, there you go. Perfect. That's the suspension work. Okay. You're coming up just like that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Hard back driver now? Stay hard driver? slowly crawling up Cadillac Hill here in the lifted Wrangler. Now, I know I, I kind of complained about having a lifted one a little bit earlier on, but right now on this trail, I'm really glad that we do have the lifted JL Wrangler. We haven't even hit once. This thing is a monster out here. So, what do you think of it? Yeah, the lifted one's really good. <laughs> yeah. It's nice not having to worry about the Jeep and just enjoy the trail. I know, that's the thing, right? Yeah, so it is nice. It's really good. I've got the sway bar disconnected. I've got it in low range. I have the front and rear locking differentials engaged. We have the tires a little bit aired down. It's just like a mountain goat. A little bit of left foot braking here and there, just to keep me nice and steady going up this hill, but holy cow, it's really good. right there for just a second. Keep coming. A little more, now straighten them up.
I don't know if you guys can tell how steep it is, but I'm barely walking up this hill and that Jeep is making it look easy. just to kind of give you a sense of what I'm seeing right now. I know it's in the sun, sorry about that, but you can't really control the time of day we're going up here. Thanks, Cal. That was yeah, awesome. No problem, man. Nice driving. Hey, boys. How's, How's the yeah. razor on this? Yeah? yeah? Even with the lifted Jeep, there is a little bit of road rash, as you can see under the body. This is our active aero exhaust tip. Right there. But for the most part, it's brand new under here. All right, there's a little bit of right there. So the Jeep before the Mopar accessories has the LED lighting group, um, Uconnect 8.4 inch display, we've got the steel bumper group, so steel bumpers how front much is and rear. It, how much is it like base without any of this stuff? 37. And with that all? 49. And look, it's got this thing right here, which you came with yours too, right? And it's like a $200 option. Why don't you show them what's it's in like there? It's like $150 for the Jeep trail rated kit. Okay, make that $150. It's like, let's see if it's the same. It's, you get the worn gloves, which I didn't even get. Uh, you get uh, a couple D-rings, yeah. a D-ring actually, no two of them, and then a strap for $150. No good. But it comes in, well once you show them what it comes in, see that's what you're paying for. A Jeep bag. That's right, a Jeep bag. And look, we got a sofa for down there too. And look at this, this is a cool little Mopar accessory, come back here. Got this little guy. Yeah. That's to reposition the rear brake light, it's a little um, Easter egg too. Wouldn't it be funny if they were like uh, eight slots instead of seven? Yeah, if they miscounted. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, the other thing I noticed about these wheels is, you know, I, I curved one, but there's not a lot to curb, right? You just hit yeah, the nut. Yeah, you just kind of yeah, over here. You can, show, you can kind of see it. Yeah, you can see right here on the fake deed locks where you, you took a nice little chunk out of them. Yeah, but because they're not out, right, they're inset. Yeah. The only don't... thing you're doing is hitting the uh, tires. Yeah, that's the nice thing about Jeeps. Yeah. All right, Tommy, no, you're wrong. Okay. I think even though it's not ideal for off-roading like this, the four-door is a better Jeep. Why? Because you have a lot more access to both people and things in the back seat. You think that the two-door is better? No. I think the four-door is the one to go for if you're gonna be What happened to no, you're, no, you're wrong. Well, I don't think you're wrong, actually. I think, I think you know, I was gonna go all defensive, but after living with one for a year and a half, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, if you have to actually use it as a as a vehicle to carry stuff in, which you will, the two the four doors the way to go. Yeah. What do we disagree about? How about the lift? No, I agree with the lift. You think it needs a two-inch lift? Two um, inch I don't lift? think it needs it, but it helps for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. How about colors? What what color would you get? I get this red. Yeah, me too. Uh. All right, I know one will disagree. Yep. All right, I would definitely get the 3.6 over the 2-liter turbo after taking it off-road. Yep, me too. Because I just like the sound better. I think the power delivery is a little bit smoother down low. Yeah, I think that the uh, turbo might be better on the road. Yep. But off-road, this uh, 3.6 is better. Okay, I got one there. Uh -huh. I wouldn't get the power soft top. All right, I get that. I think that's trouble. But with the touch of a button, you basically have a convertible. Yeah, but with a flick of $4,000, I could also have the Jeep YJ. That could right. be a convertible all the time. Dang, that's a good point. That's a good point. All right, well, we try to know you're wrong. I guess that's now turned into a, yes, you're right. Yes, you're right.
say as uh, butt clenching goes, the uh, Black Bear Pass is a lot more of a butt clencher. I yeah, mean, it's a lot more dangerous because you've got that huge cliff. Yeah, here you can obviously hit trees, but there's not like a 2,000 foot fall straight down to Telluride. Nope. This is a lot more technical, but... Not as scary. Not as scary. Yeah, I'd be more worried about the Jeep. Getting damaged. Yeah, but we could get to that point where there is the shelf road, so we haven't done the whole thing yet. Yeah, we'll see. But so far I'm more worried about the Jeep than I am worried about me. Well, Tommy, we've made it to the top of Cadillac Hill and Observation Point. This has been a bucket list moment. Thank you guys for joining us for these two videos. I hope we've taken you along for the ride and we can show you at least a little bit of what makes this Rubicon Trail so magic and perhaps what makes the Jeep a Jeep thing. As always, this is Roman saying thanks for watching and behind the camera is Tommy. We'll see you guys next time right here on the Fast Lane Car. Ciao. Hey Tommy. So I'm here with a legend. This yeah, I am a legend. You, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm John Pearlie Huffman. I write for Car and Driver magazine and plenty of other places too, including I, 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 formerly the New York Times. And, and Mr. Huffman has been around the entire automotive spectrum. He knows it backwards and forwards. So what makes this trail so special? I know it backwards better than I know yeah. it forwards. <laughs> um, the thing is, is that you know if you talk about the, the Rubicon, what's great about the Rubicon it is an amazingly well kept, amazingly challenging amazingly fun trail that you will hate absolutely at times and then in retrospect we'll say you had the best time of your life yeah and in retrospect of all the great trips you could do it's one of the great american spots look at if you look out over here where we are and, and things it is not run by the is it's not run by the national park service it's not run by the forest service it's run by guys who want to have a good place to drive and it is a great place to drive First of all, let me have you your name and your title. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Chris Piscatelli. I'm design manager for Jeep Exterior Studio. Uh, and you're driving Stitch, which is a concept truck. Tell me about it. I mean, it's lightweight. Sure. It's got big wheels. It's got a lift. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, it has no lift. That's no, the interesting okay, part. No of lift. It. Managed to take 1,100 uh, pounds out of it, and the vehicle naturally lifted itself about two inches. This whole exercise is uh, how to increase performance by light weighting. So, by kind of taking things off the vehicle, uh, except for kind of the, the functional pieces, you know, for, for drivability, um, and then seeing what they do with this thing is just such a performer. It's kind of, you know, a direct competitor to a Razor, right? A little bit, right? Yeah, except it's three legal. Yeah, yeah, it has a... Or is this three legal? Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. And actually, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty good driver on the road, too. Yeah, it's, and, uh, um, it's peppy with it. So this is a 3.6, yeah. automatic, and honestly, with all the weight that we took out of it, it's a little rocket ship. And what's also, what's also cool is you actually scratched up your designer concept wheels. I did. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I don't think many companies would do that. No, no, I think it, uh, we're pretty unique in the sense that we actually build these things to function and then we drive them. Um, and we, we drive them pretty hard. And if something breaks, you fix it and then you keep driving it. Notice you've got a scrambler? I do. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that heading towards uncomfortable is that heading, territory is for that, me? Is that, heading, <laughs> is that heading towards the next JT? I was just saying I'm a big fan of, uh, of trucks. All Jeeps, Jeep trucks, <laughs> whatever they are, yeah. Well, I can't wait, hopefully, one day to be out here with you driving the next version of that. Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. the year this year I've been lucky enough to do Hell's Revenge, Fins and Things, Top of the World, 
Black Bear Pass, Imogene Pass, Ophir Pass, and now the Rubicon Trail. And uh, I'm very grateful for the fact that you guys watch and allow me to do this. And I have to tell you, out of all the Jeeps I've driven, this one is one of my favorites. It just seems to be perfect for this trail. Right tires, right lift, right transmission. You got it. Right roof or lack thereof. <laughs> and of course the right trail. Straight ahead? And of course, the right traveling companion and the right weather. And you combine all of that, you've got yourself a hell of a day. One that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Because I know this is a cliche, it doesn't get much better. It really doesn't. Right, except for this loud fan, I could live without that. Otherwise, it doesn't get much better. It's relentless. It doesn't cease up. There's an obstacle up here that everybody's hitting on. Oh yeah. You hear it? Yep. So let's see if this bad boy hits. I'm gonna go with no. Speed for the day is not gonna have any issues here. Slow. Yeah, we'll take it down slow. Our guide's not even looking at us. Okay. That was bad. Yeah, it hits. It hits. Sorry, Jeep. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Didn't mean to do that, Jeep. Feel I bad. I don't think it's been the first time on the last two days. Huh? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Easy, Tommy. <laughs> That's so fun. All right, there's a guy on a motorcycle, Tommy. He's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loose rocks, motorcycles. No good. They're no good. It's no good. Mm -hmm. 